Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and this message is for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to talk about an important subject of un on unforgiveness because this causes so much bondage for us believers that just hold on to unforgiveness. They hold on to uh, all the wrongs that others have done to them and it turns into bitterness and it actually leads to, it can lead to severe mental afflictions. And every single law that the Lord has given us is for our good. And even though it may not make sense how it's for our good at that moment, it is always in our best interest to obey his laws. And when he says, forgive those who sin against you, that is for our good. So I want to share um, a parable from Jesus on unforgiveness so that we can um, understand how we've been forgiven and how we should be able to forgive others no matter how bad of a evil anyone has committed against us. There was a parable about a king who had a servant that owed him 10,000 talents. And that servant begged the king and the king listened and uh, forgave that servant of all the 10,000 talents. And shortly after that servant went out and found a servant of his own that owed him 100 denarii. And that servant begged him, but that um, person who was owed the 100 denarii refused to forgive him. And so um, I want to tell you, just stop right there and tell you what the dollar amounts are. I think that's really important to understand. I used to read this um, verse, it's from Matthew chapter 18, and just go, okay, like 10,000 talents versus 100 denarii. I'm not sure what that is, but it must be a big difference. And the difference is, what this servant refused to forgive this other servant of 100 denarii was equivalent to about 100 days of labor. So that's a lot of money, you know, 100 days of labor. But that 10,000 talents that he was forgiven of by the king, which is us, that we've been forgiven from Jesus, but he is dying on the cross for our sins, that 10,000 talents is equivalent to 73 million days of labor. So 100 days versus 73 million days. So when you see how much God has forgiven us of our sins and what it took to forgive us, which Jesus dying on the cross for us. We should be able to freely forgive everyone of any sins they commit against us in our entire lifetime. And that is what God is commanding us here. And to get to the kind of sober part of the passage, there's no sugarcoating the word of God. We have to know the truth. Matthew chapter 18, verse 32 to 35 tells us what happens if you don't forgive. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat you of each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. So that's the reality. and I believe many of you are struggling and being tortured by these jailers, which are demons, um, because you are refusing to forgive those who have sinned against you. And I understand some of these sins that you've endured are tremendously wicked. You know, it could be from childhood. It could be uh, recent or I mean, it could be anywhere in your life where you um, endure such trauma and such evil that it's really hard to get out of your head and you hold on to that bitterness, you know, that uh, the want for revenge or something like that. But what the Lord is saying here, and it seems harsh, especially saying this to someone that went through such hardship, such trauma, that if you don't forgive that person who did that to you, then it says, in his anger, his master turned them over to the jailers to be tortured. But that's the reality. You know, for people that are going through such severe mental afflictions that are feeling suicidal at this point. Um, I heard a, a lady go through paranoid schizophrenia because she couldn't forgive at one point. You know, there's people going through depression, you know, panic, anxiety, and much more because of unforgiveness. That sounds like torture. And that's the reality. You have to forgive in order to obey God's command and to be free from these afflictions as a result of unforgiveness. And so here's a good way to look at this on um, uh, forgiving others. You forgive for your sake, not for that person who has hurt you. 
You're not forgiving that person for their sake. You're doing it so that you can be free. You know, God made a way for you to be free through forgiveness. That is the key thing. And so if you continue in unforgiveness, you'll continue to be tormented by these jailers or these demons. And so when these unforgiveness just festers, these strongholds are put up against you and these arrows start raining down on you and prison bars come up and surround you. And we are always better off listening to his command. So I urge you to forgive. And what I'll tell you, I'll give you some guidance on how to do that a little later. But I want to talk about first some truths that God has given us so that you can let go and um, more easily uh, forgive those who have sinned against you. So first of all, God has forgiven you of 73 million work days versus you having to forgive that person of 100 days, work days. This is equivalent, you know, according to the parable. It's probably not exactly like that, but it's just infinitely more of what God has forgiven you versus this very finite and small sin that someone has sinned against you. So I know what you guys, a lot of you guys are struggling with is revenge. How can that person just get away with what they did to me or they did to somebody I love? So Deuteronomy 32 to 35, God addresses this. He says, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. In due time their foot will slip, their day of disaster is near, and their doom rushes upon us. And if someone says, well, that's the Old Testament, Hebrews 10, 30 says, For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. The author of Hebrews quoted, I believe, Deuteronomy 32:35. The Lord says, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. It's not yours to avenge that person. It's all God's. You have to leave him room. Proverbs 20, 22 says, do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will avenge you. And then we move into forgiveness. Ephesians 4, chapter, chapter 4, verses 31 to 32 let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. First Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. So to summarize what we just said here, you have to leave revenge to God and you have to choose to forgive in obedience to God's word. You know, basically to make it simple and you not even have to go into all the details, just do what he tells you to do, then he'll take care of the rest. And that's a simple childlike faith way to live. Whatever he tells you, just do it and know that it is for your best and he will take care of the rest. And so when you are ready to forgive and to just forgive because you're obeying God, you have to understand forgiveness is not an emotion or a feeling. You don't need that to validate your authenticity of your forgiveness. Forgiveness is a choice. And so to, ver to forgive is to obey God. And although it may feel impossible to truly forgive from the heart, if you choose to forgive in obedience to God, he will surely enable you to forgive from your heart. Since he commanded it, he will make a way. All you need to do is be obedient and choose to do what he tells you to do. So forgive the person who has sinned against you or the multiple persons. And here's a practical way that I suggest on how to forgive someone. So go to God in prayer. Okay, and this takes humility. Okay, so go to God in prayer and mention each person by name on uh, the person that hurt you and explain to God how he hurt you. God already knows, but you speak, you tell him all this as a sign of humility and showing God that you need him. So you explain, this person hurt me. This is what he did. And then in obedience to God's command and trust in him, declare your forgiveness to that person. If you do this, trusting in the Lord and obedience to his command, he will enable you to truly forgive from your heart. He will do it. So just do what he tells you to do. And then just let him take care of the rest. He 
you will do it. So I want you to be free from any of these footholds that has been given to the devil against you through unforgiveness. Don't let it hurt you one more day. Forgive those who have sinned against you for your sake, not theirs, but for yours in obedience to God. God bless you.